Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, I am sure you've heard it before, and you probably said the same thing to your kids. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's true. I'm sure of it. <laughs> eating, breakfast helps, <clears throat> eating breakfast helps fuel us up for the day ahead, and studies have shown that kids who regularly eat breakfast not only maintain healthier weights, but actually do better in school. Hmm. Now, a study at Mayo Clinic suggests that eating breakfast regularly is beneficial for adults, too. Hmm. It helps you control weight gain, believe the, it or not. The, the, I, I do believe it. The study analyzed nearly 350 healthy adults and found that study participants who skipped breakfast were more likely to be obese than those who ate it frequently, which was defined as five to seven times a week. And here to discuss is one of the lead authors of that study, Dr. Nema Kovasan. Kovacin? Kovacin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. Though. Okay, a cardiovascular <laughs> disease researcher at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program. It's nice to have you here, Dr. Kovacin. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me here. Dr. Kovacin, good to have you. There are lots of things that you probably could have studied. Why did you choose to study what people eat for breakfast and whether they eat it? We know from the literature that uh, there is uh, like an association between uh, breakfast consumption, weight gain, uh, and risk of being overweight and obesity in uh, children and adolescents, as you mentioned before. But the literature in, uh, in the adults' population is much less clear, is much more inconsistent. And uh, we wonder if that could be because uh, the population study in prior study included subjects with prior comorbidities, prior health issues, which may have uh, confounded the results. Uh, and also, the majority of all the other studies, uh, they simply ask the question, do you usually eat breakfast, yes or no? And we wanted to see whether there is actually an association between uh, the frequency of breakfast consumption, uh, how many times you actually eat breakfast uh, on an average week, uh, and uh, all the body weight measures. Um. Doesn't it make a difference what you're eating for breakfast, not if you were eating breakfast or not? You would think so. And yes, most likely there is also a difference because we know that consuming breakfast doesn't necessarily mean consuming a healthy breakfast. You can have a donut uh, with cream, which is probably not the same as <laughs> having uh, uh, a bowl of fruit and a yogurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, most likely, we will be able to answer also this question because we have collected this data and we are in the process of analyzing it. And we are also in the process of analyzing a number of other uh, um, unhealthy um, lifestyle behaviors which are likely implicated in, uh, in our findings in, uh, in the risk of weight gain. For instance, we know that those uh, who are more likely to skip breakfast are also more likely to engage uh, in, uh, uh, in poor lifestyle choices like uh, um, smoking, uh, um, poor nutritional choices, uh, excessive alcohol consumption. Uh, they tend to snack more frequently during the day and they tend also to eat late at night. Mm. And all these factors are associated with uh, uh, increased weight gain and increased risk of obesity. So the bottom line uh, of the study, uh, one of the things was that if you eat breakfast, you're less likely to be overweight or less likely to gain weight as you get older? This was uh, a, uh, a cross-sectional study, so we took a snapshot uh, of, uh, of the data. We don't know if uh, a longitudinal study will show the same results. Uh, when we asked uh, our subject about the breakfast, uh, we also asked uh, if uh, they had gained uh, any weight uh, in the prior year. And uh, we... Uh, um, we selected uh, those uh, who, um, who reported uh, eating gain uh, as uh, we classify them uh, as uh, um, having uh, gained any weight if they gain at least one kilogram, which is a little bit more than two pounds. And we found that those uh, who reported eating breakfast almost every day, they were also less likely to have uh, experienced any weight gain in the past. And when we included in the analysis only those who experienced weight gain, then we found a linear association between the frequency of breakfast consumption and the magnitude of weight gain. Because those uh, who, um, who reported gaining weight uh, but were eating breakfast almost every day, they gained only uh, about three pounds, less than three pounds actually in the prior year, compared to those who actually skipped breakfast who gained uh, about eight pounds, uh, which is more than, uh, more than double that. And how, how do you explain it? 
Well, we don't know whether uh, uh, eating breakfast is uh, independently associated with increased weight gain or uh, whether uh, it's a mediator in the process. Um, as again, we are going to measure all the other potential factors implicated in, uh, uh, in our findings. But what we know from the literature is that, uh, and there is an increasing literature in, uh, in this field, we know that the timing of meal is very important for weight management. We know, for instance, that uh, uh, over the past decades, uh, we, uh, we have changed our eating uh, habits. Uh, we tend to skip breakfast more often, uh, and we tend to eat more during, during dinner time, and we tend also to eat uh, dinner uh, more late at night. Uh, and uh, this is unhealthy because uh, our body are not... Uh, um, we have, we have an internal clock, we have a biological clock that tells us when to eat, when to rest, and when to exercise. And uh, biologically, we are not predisposed to eat during the during night time. Uh, our body is uh, biologically predisposed to rest, uh, to sleep at night, uh, not to process food. And when we eat at uh, night time, then our body is uh, a bit confused, so it doesn't know how to properly process food. And all the biological mechanisms implicated in uh, um, in breaking down nutrients uh, are set for uh, nighttime patterns, uh, which uh, are set biologically to, uh, to fasting. Um. That's so interesting. So even I your body knows, or your body knows what it needs when it comes to even the time of day that it yes, should be eating the food. Yes, what it needs and when it needs it. Um. Wow. And so the eating a big breakfast, I it's been my experience that people who say, oh, I don't eat breakfast because then it just makes me hungrier all day long. It's uh, actually interesting uh, yeah. that those who skip breakfast are more likely to report to be on a diet. Um, really? Yeah. Yes, they're more likely to be dieters. Um. So possibly if people are considering going on a diet, they should be eating exactly, breakfast. Exactly, because uh, if you, especially if you eat a breakfast full of like fibers, which make you feel fuller for longer, you're less likely to snack during the day. You're less likely to overeat at lunch and especially at dinner. So, and also, obviously, during the daytime, you're more likely to consume the calories that you have uh, eaten at breakfast, um, rather than just going to sleep and uh, having uh, those uh, excess calories just stored in your body. You are a cardiovascular researcher, mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, one of the studies that you've done, but you obviously um, know a lot about what's healthy and what isn't. Do you know if the, it's better to eat no breakfast than to eat an unhealthy breakfast? That's uh, a question that I'm not sure how to answer. Um, the data in the literature and our studies show that on average it's better to eat uh, rather than not to eat, regardless of what you're actually Even eating. Even if it's a donut and what do you say, cream? For Wait, the seed, yes. <laughs> donut and orange juice <laughs> sounds pretty good. And the reason being, uh, because again, you are less likely to, uh, to arrive at like 11 in the morning and be starving uh, and then uh, overeating. Um, I want you to study uh, sugar. That's like if, if mm -hmm. I can put in a request, you know, because sometimes it seems like if I have too much sugar with my breakfast, that sends me into the ditch for the rest of the day. Um, is there any research being done on the effect of sugar in our diet in this way? Um, yes, there is definitely a lot of research in that. But again, uh, I think uh, that we have to consider that uh, eating breakfast uh, doesn't necessarily mean eating a healthy breakfast, mm -hmm. uh, and we know that. Uh, also, we know that uh, the uh, the breakdown uh, of calories throughout the day is uh, uh, is not necessarily the same, uh, depending on uh, your nutritional choices. Um, and uh, while you should probably have about 15-20% of your overall calorie intake during breakfast, uh, if you consume, uh, again, two donuts, uh, you're yeah. more likely yeah. to exceed. Uh, not a lot of fiber in those donuts. Yeah, not much. <laughs> All right, what's the perfect <laughs> breakfast? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, if I had to make a guess, uh, I would say, uh, based again on what we know from other studies, uh, um, I would go for uh, a bowl of uh, um, probably whole grain uh, cereals, uh, um, fruit, um, and uh, an alternative would be uh, an omelet, uh, eggs, uh, which would be full of protein, which again uh, keeps you fuller for longer. And definitely some fruits. Uh, uh, or a whole or grain veggies, cereal so. and an apple. That's what you yes, had for breakfast, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Trying to be a good one. <laughs> All right. The importance of eating breakfast with cardiovascular researcher Dr. Naima Kobasan. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Kobasan. Thank you.